This ATX Benz power supply unit is used 700 watts in power. It can deliver fixed voltages, 12 volts at 54 amperes, 5 volts at 22 amperes, and 3.3 volts at 22 amperes. Its variable voltage output is from 0 to 36 volts at 6 amperes maximum. Wait, here's more. You can charge two USB devices while the power supply is on standby. Unlike other ATX Benz power supply units out there, this can also be powered by solar panel and is Wi-Fi capable. Una sa lahat, mag-subscribe muna kayo sa aking channel para suportahan ito. You may also join this channel as a member to avail of exclusive perks like priority in comments reply and early access or exclusive access to some videos for members only. You can also help fund some projects here by sharing super thanks. Wow! I started preparing this Benz power supply project weeks ago. I first did the testing of this ATX power supply unit in this uh, previous video. And this is now the final product. A super and smarter ATX Benz power supply. Let me first talk about the belt of the casing of this power supply. I decided to expand the existing case of the ATX power supply unit by flattening the front plate to serve as an extended floor, enough space for the added components. I cut a piece of wood to serve as its front panel and bore holes on it for the components. The cover for the extension is also made of plywood. I use a self-adhesive PVC film to cover and protect the plywood. I put six rubber footings at the bottom to elevate the floor of the Benz power supply. To turn on the Benz power supply is via the existing 220 volt AC power switch of the ATX power unit, which is located at the back panel. The power switch totally cuts off the AC supply coming through the standard C13 socket for its power cord. The AC ATX has no external fuse holder as its 3 ampere fuse is stuck on the circuit board. The added components to this Benz power supply are either electrical or electronics. Terminal strip, binding post, toggle switch, a rocker switch, power resistor, LED pilot lights, USB ports, photovoltaic connectors, and a DC back boost converter. To minimize crowding, I have decided not to add individual fuses for its fixed output voltages. Anyway, the ATX has its internal overloading safety feature. I proceeded connecting all cables from the ATX board to the terminal strip, minimizing clutter near the front panel. I combined three cables for its voltage output to give more strength in handling huge current. I use terminal lag on cables whenever it is needed, but I have decided to permanently solder the cables on the binding post and switches since these are always being touched. The terminal strip and the power resistor are attached into the metallic case of the ATX. The case helps dissipate heat from the heat sink of the power resistor. I ensure that the length of the cables from the terminal strip to the components on the front panel is enough to be stretched to the front for easy access during maintenance and repair. The components on the front panel are arranged judiciously to avoid clutter. Minus the terminal strip, here are the connections. The green power supply on cable goes directly to the toggle switch. Since the switch is a single pole double throw with the up and uh, down positions are both on, I put a jumper to connect the two terminals here, terminal 1 and terminal 2, and this is connected to the uh, green uh, cable of the ATX while the common terminal is connected to ground. The gray power good cable goes to the LED pilot lamp. The other end of the lamp is connected to ground. The gray cable is only up to the terminal strip while I just insert the red wire of the LED lamp to the corresponding uh, terminal of the strip. You can see here the red terminal of the pilot LED light or the LED pilot light. Instead of using another LED for standby, I connected the purple standby cable to the USB ports assembly. The negative terminal of the USB ports is connected to ground. The purple standby cable has 5 volts uh, in it up to 2.5 amperes. So if the two USB ports are used 
then the current will be split. To save space, I only use two block binding posts for negative terminals, one for the variable output and the other one is for the three fixed voltages. I purposely placed the two block binding posts side by side so the cables won't get tangled. The left pair here is for the variable output while the rest are for the fixed voltages outputs. The orange, red and yellow cables are connected to its binding post. I was not able to find yellow and orange binding posts. What are sold online are black and red only. So I've arranged the fixed voltages from lowest to highest voltage output from the left is 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts. And the three outputs can be paired with any of the two black uh, binding posts here. Another set of yellow cables from ATX unit for 12 volts is for the input of the back boost converter intended for the variable output. But since the converter also gets supply from solar panel, the input side of the converter, both the positive and the negative, go to the common terminal of the rocker switch. And the output or the uh, positive 12 volts of the ATX and uh, another ground here also go to the rocker switch. The other terminal of the rocker switch go to the photovoltaic uh, connectors for the solar panels. So if I switch here, the supply to the converter is from the ATX. If I switch to the side, the supply is from the solar panel. I chose the 12 volt line of the ATX for the converter because it is 54 amperes current rating. If ever another device is connected to the fixed 12 volt output, the ATX can still handle another load on the variable output. The power resistor load should be connected to the positive 5 volts and to the ground to stabilize the ATX. It's already crowded here on the front so I decided to place the power resistor inside the ATX unit but attached to the back panel. And I screwed the Wi-Fi module on the top cover of the supply. Finally, it's ready for test runs. I'm turning on the Benz power supply by powering first the uh, ATX unit. As you notice, there's no light on the front panel because the ATX is put on standby mode yet. There's no voltage output. You can try test here, no voltage output, no voltage output. I do away with the standby indicator lamp, but instead I use the USB port assembly as a sign that the power supply is on uh, standby. I just need to push the switch here on the USB port assembly. You can uh, see here the reading of the uh, voltmeter is one point or 5.79 volts. And this allows me to charge devices on these two USB ports at 2.5 amperes in total, even on standby mode. The power switch here is a single pole double throw with the off position at the center. I can turn on the bench power supply by toggling up or down, let's say up. You can see here the LED is turning on, I'll turn off or down you can see here the LED is uh, uh, on at this juncture the binding posts here for fixed voltages are already live with its respective voltage output directly coming from the ATX unit so we'll try uh, please take note of the multi-tester it's 3.3 volts 3.42 volts the reading is 3.42 volts for 5 volts it's 5.05 for 12 volts it's 12.59 or 12.60 the other pair of binding posts here is for the variable output which is coming from this uh, DC back boost converter which is still off this is still off because I put a selector switch at the input of the converter this rocker switch is over here uh, on top of the cover of the power supply unit 
if I switch to the left, the converter is getting a 12 volt supply from the ATX. Let's try. You see, the converter is already turning on. And we can power on the ATX. Let's check the input voltage. The input voltage is 12.37 from the ATX. For its output, it's exactly 12.0. Let's try to measure. The readings on our on my multi tester multi is uh, 11.99. So more or less, it's the same. And again, you can also adjust the voltage here. You can increase, look at that multi-tester and the uh, readings here on the screen. If I switch on to the right, the converter is getting supply from the solar panel. Yes, for now, the uh, converter is solar powered. I use my 6 watt mini solar panel with an open circuit voltage of about uh, Let's check, it's 10 volts. Then I put a green LED uh, indicator light here so that I would know if the supply for the converter is from solar panel or from the uh, ATX. If this light turns on, it means the converter is getting supply from the solar panel. In order for this uh, LED pilot indicator lamp to function as intended as an indicator for solar mode, I connect the positive terminal of the lamp directly to the positive terminal of the solar panel and the negative terminal of the lamp is connected to the negative terminal on the common terminals of the rocker switch. To know how to set up this converter when using solar panel and how to use the controls here, go to this video and also this video down here on how and where to use this uh, converter. As far as the Wi-Fi capability of this converter, I need more time to decipher the application because what is uh, displayed on the app is different. This is supposed to be the display on the app where you can see the voltage, current, and power. But for now, this is what on the app. The interface is different, really different, and it's not the right display. And I always receive error messages via email about the device uh, is too hot, but in actual, it isn't. Or there's abnormal communication to the temperature sensor but I have yet to attach a sensor on the converter. I believe I bought the right Wi-Fi module, ESP8285816. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what is happening. For battery charging, I'm already purchasing the external sensor to measure the temperature of the battery during charging. I'll do separate video on the battery uh, charging using the Backbus uh, converter XYSK120 on my ATX uh, Benz power supply unit. As a policy of this channel to avoid conflict of interest, I'm not sharing sales link of the components I am using here, but I can share the sales link via chat on person to person basis for members only of this channel, check the description below for the chat link. For only 49 pesos and 99 pesos a month membership fees, you wow. can help me sustain this channel. For other questions and ideas, please put it in the comment section below. Dekan selamat, bye.